While you've probably heard this zodiac called Scorpio, the Scorpion constellation is actually named Scorpius. This constellation, like the rest of the zodiacs, lie on the ecliptic, or the path of the sun. Despite all of them being on the same plane, you won't always find them in the same spot in the night sky. Due to the Earth's tilt, the summer constellations fall lower in the horizon. That means you won't have to strain your neck looking for Scorpius. So, let's draw upon the Scorpion constellation to learn more about the night sky. Scorpius shows up during the summer months, late June through September. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, the ecliptic gets so low in the summer that Scorpius isn't around for as long as most of the other zodiacal constellations, before it dips back below the horizon again. Not only that, it naturally sits lowest on the ecliptic. As a result, there's only about two months where the entire constellation is visible after sunset. It took me several tries to get a good picture of Scorpius. There were always mountains or light pollution in the way of the lower stars, which was frustrating. However, even though I didn't know at the time, one of my photos did have a clear shot of the entire constellation. So after adjusting the brightness and contrast, I was excited to see that I had captured Scorpion's elusive bottom three stars. You can see them here in this photo, just above the horizon. Um, the horizon is visible, which is not what I was hoping for, but at least there are no mountains in the way, and it's still a pretty neat shot. Scorpius is the Latin word for scorpion, obviously. There is more than one myth associated with it, but it's often connected with Orion. One story describes how Artemis, the goddess of the wild animals, sent a scorpion to kill Orion after he boasted that he could kill every animal on earth. Orion and the scorpion became mortal enemies, and Zeus banished them to the stars. Now they occupy opposite ends of the sky. Orion hunts during the winter, but hides in the summer months when Scorpius appears. You can find Scorpius between Libra and Sagittarius, but really the best way to find it is to look for Antares. That's its brightest star. In fact, many of the stars in Scorpius shine brightly, so look for the star pattern that looks like a hook. In Hawaii, Scorpius is known as the fish hook of Maui, the demigod. Then there's these three stars above Antares, which are also pretty easy to spot. To me, they resemble a pitchfork. Some of the notable stars in Scorpius include Antares, or Alpha Scorpii, Lesath, or Upsilon Scorpii, Shaula, also called Lambda Scorpii, and Deshuba, or Delta Scorpii. Antares is Greek for rival of Mars, which is fitting because, like Mars, it has a reddish hue. It is a relatively bright star, similar in magnitude to Spica, which is in Virgo, and Aldebaran from Taurus. Although its brightness varies, it averages a magnitude of about plus one. It is 604 light years away and is classified as a red supergiant star, which means it is among the most massive and luminous stars. Its circumference is bigger than the orbit of Mars. Lesath is Arabic for bite of a poisonous animal. It is 590 light years away and is part of an optical pair. That means it looks like it's really close to another star from our perspective on Earth, but it's really not that close, astronomically speaking. Shaula is Arabic for the raised tail. Together, Lesath and Shaula are often referred to as the cat's eyes. Shaula is 570 light years away, and it is Scorpius's second brightest star with a visual magnitude of about 1.6. Although it looks like one star, it is actually a triple star system. So that means there's just three of them locked in orbit with each other. Scorpius sits near the center of the Milky Way, where there are a lot of deep sky objects to look for but I will just name a few. There are two noteworthy star clusters near Scorpius's stinger, M6, also known as the butterfly cluster, and M7, also known as the Ptolemy cluster. Both are open star clusters, meaning they are only loosely bound by mutual gravitational attraction, and they are comprised of thousands of stars. M7 is pretty unique because you can easily see it without a telescope. Both are actually visible in my photo right here. Also near the stinger are some nebulas, specifically NGC 6334, or the Cat's Paw Nebula, which is the perfect name because it kind of looks like that and it's not too far from the cat's eyes that we talked about earlier, those two bright stars in Scorpius's stinger. We also have NGC 6302, or the Butterfly Nebula. 
which is not in the butterfly cluster, but both are kind of near the scorpion's tail as well. You need long exposures to see nebula in all of their beauty, otherwise they'll mostly look white. Either way, they're neat to see, and I love looking at photographs of nebula. Anyway, that's all for now. Next time the sky is clear and the moon is not too bright, take a moment to get outside and take in the stars. As always, keep on learning, and please remember to smile.